Well, here, so y'all can go ahead and get started whenever you're ready. So how was that Thanksgiving trip with the team and being able to spend time with Adia's family in San Diego? It was nice to just be with my team, be with Adia's family. You know, it's always hard on the holidays being away from your own family, but um, having the second family that I can uh, go home to and, and go into, you know, Coach Adia's home, um, it was the second best thing the, that, that we could have had, so it was fun. Um, how are you seeing these youngsters, especially Kaylin, develop this year? It's been so much fun to just watch Kaitlyn ball out, um, especially along with the other freshmen. But Kaitlyn puts in a lot of work behind the scenes. Um, the shots that you see her take, she she works on day in and day out. So I think um, it was just a matter of time for her to have a breakout game like that. And I think uh, the sky's the limit for them, um, all of them. And they all um, are bought into you know this program and they challenge us every day so I think it's it's fun to just see them compete and um, see them get better every day and um, shine on the court when it when it's time to where do you see your development and where you are at this point in the season yeah it's no secret that I've I've kind of had a slow start um, I haven't been shooting as well as um, I'm used to and I think um, with the confidence that my coach is instilled in me and the confidence that I have in myself, um, I'm still going to continue to take those shots. Uh, I work, there's a lot of work that goes in behind those shots that I take. So I think um, it's just a matter of time before they fall and I'm not too worried about it. Um, it's early one, but I also have a team that is going to continue to find me. Um, they're going to pick up the slack when um, some of those shots aren't falling. And I think um, just staying poised and knowing that the coaches are, are still going to have that trust in me and um, that confidence in me. Um, it, it does everything, and, and, and it's, um, it's, I'm excited for you know, the season to continue to pick up uh, the competition to get better, and I think um, that's just going to continue to bring the best out of all of us. Is there anything specifically that you're working on right now to try to get your shot back to what you're used to? Um, I, it's the same thing. I shoot every day um, before practice, after practice. Um, there's nothing that I need to change, I don't think. I think it's just a matter of it'll fall, and uh, I'm not too worried about it right now. I think getting in the paint is something that um, the coaches have challenged me a little bit more on. And, um, you know, so when those shots aren't falling, I'm still, you know, able to get to the free throw line or able to just create for my teammates. And I think um, that will also just expand my game in general. So uh, I think it's just a blessing in disguise. It's just challenging me a little bit more to um, put more pressure on my, my inside game. So what does that do for a shooter when, you know, your shot isn't falling right now, but you work inside the paint and get a couple buckets, what kind of confidence does that give you in the game moving forward? Right. It just, it, it gives, um, it's the unpredictability that um, every scorer wants to have, you know. Um, I'm not just a shooter. Um, so I think it, it puts pressure on defenses to guard us honest. And I think we have a lot of assets on the team that um, one can knock down outside shots, but that can also get in the paint. Shayna Pellington is going to get in the paint whenever she wants. And I think um, we've seen that that's helped our offense a lot. You know, when we get in the paint and then kick out, our percentages are really high. Um, so I think just adding, you know, with me getting in the paint as well, um, that'll just help our offense. And I think. Um, Moving forward, that that's going to be something that I also focus on. And how does, for you, what's the adjustment been like? Last year, you were relied upon to be the scorer. Mm -hmm. This year, you know, everybody, almost everybody on the team is a scorer, right? Yeah. Can score. It's different for you. Right. What's what's that adjustment been? Like? Yeah, I, I like it a lot better having, um, you know, the pressure taken off. And it's it's not um, so much as a pressure thing, but it's also um, the defense has to guard all of us on this. You know, I'm not being double teamed. Um, I'm able to come off screens and have an open look. And I think um, knowing that I can, if my shot is, is a good shot, there may be a shot that's a, a, a great shot. And um, I have teammates that are going to knock it down or, you know, make something happen with, it, with the ball. So I think um, being able to... Um, trust that you know. Let me get rid of the ball, and it's it may come back, it may not, but we we we'll, we'll score regardless. I think that's um, it's important for you know all a, a scorer to um, be able to trust trust teammates and and trust the process and trust the um, uh, the offense that our our coaches have put in front of us. First defense, I mean, that's where Adia's been focused a lot in the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. How do you feel you're advancing in that? How do you think the team is advancing in that? 
Yeah, it's been really competitive in practice with our defense. You know, a lot of one on one. We're playing one on one against the guys, and um, it's it's a competition every day, and it's helping us grow a lot. Um, we needed to really minimize our our um, straight line drives. We're getting you know driven on um, a lot, and that's something that we've recognized. We watch a lot of film on it, and um, just our positioning, um, you know, off the ball as well. And I think with me. Um, you know that lateral movement was something that I, I definitely needed to work on. Just staying in front of in front of my defender, and um, we talk about you know taking it personal. It's you know you, you need to take your matchup personally, and um, that's when you know you play your best defense when um, you don't want the person in front of you to score. So I think just having that mentality has has helped us, and and having that dog mentality to you know get a stop. Let's all lock on uh, lock in, and it takes five of us to do so. So um, just making sure that we um, don't don't let up. And, and continue to keep, to play 40 minutes of great defense. How do you think the freshmen are taking to that? Because going from high school to college, the one transition that everybody talks about right. is the defensive side of the ball. So how do you think they're adapting to that? Yeah, it's it's a, it's a struggle. I'm going to be honest. You know, going into college, um, my freshman year, it was hard to learn. You know, the different. Um, different positioning that I needed to be in, um, especially playing high in the lane. You know, um, it, it applies a lot of pressure on your uh, defensive movements and, and your um, athleticism. And I think they're doing a great job of just coming in every day and competing and um, learning from the upperclassmen. We have, as you can see, we have, you know, Lamaya, Paris Clark, they can play great defense. They get a lot of tips, a lot of a lot of hands on the ball. So I think um, they're just a great asset to, one, um, helping us but also you know they're they're teaching us as well because you know we have to play against them every day so we're putting that pressure on each other to um, just get better every day going back to your offense if somewhere if someone were just to look at your stats right now mm -hmm. is it 11.2 is your average or 9.2 15 minutes a look that's pretty good scoring average it's not what you had in the past mm -hmm. and it's not where you want to be. What sort of do you say to those people who are just looking at that because there's so much more to you than than where it is right now? Where right. stuff is. It's early, and um, if you um, watch the games, I, I'm still taking the same shots that I took last year. Um, I'm utilizing my mid-range game. I'm shooting the three well. Um, I'm trying to get in the paint more, and I think right now uh, I'm, um, I don't like to say slump because I don't believe in slump, but I, I need to make my free throws, and that's just the honest truth. And I put a lot of more uh, a lot more attention to my my free throws, and the coaches have helped me uh, get in pressure situations in practice to knock down some free throws. So I think that's something that will change very soon. But um, I'm, I'm still going to take the same shots. Uh, there's a lot more to come. And um, when you look at the whole stat sheet, it, it's anyone's night, any game. And so um, it may be my game next next uh, Sunday and it, or Saturday, and it may be, um, you know, anybody else's game. And I think that's the great part of having a team where um, you have to guard all of us, honestly, because um, we have scores on all parts of the floor at once. So it's it's great. Correctly, you played at Boise State before ASU, so you've played at the pit before. Correct. What is that experience like, and what can you tell the freshmen about playing in that type of environment? Yeah, I told them that New Mexico is kind of like the Tucson of, uh, or sorry, Albuquerque is the, the Tucson of New Mexico. Um, there, that was our biggest game in the Mountain West. So going there, you know, we could expect a lot of fans. They they come out and they support. And um, I tried to explain, you know, the court is, you know, that you're in that little rectangle, but then the pit is higher than you so it feels like everyone's kind of just looking down and it's fun to play in um it's, it's a lot of fun so we I think we embrace those situations obviously playing here is it's it's electric every night that we play at home so I think we're used to it but it's going to be fun to have that challenge on the road and have you know um, other fans uh you know the other team's fans kind of looking at us instead of our fans just cheering us on so I think it's going to be a fun challenge and we're excited what's it like going from like Arizona to like you know, at the tournament, there wasn't a lot of, from what we could see on that. Right. So what's that like? How, how do you keep the energy going when you don't have the fans, whether they're cheering for or against? I mean, it's just uh, it, you, you have that instilled in you from, you know, a young age just to be able to compete and play basketball. So this is something that we love to do. So I think just being out there with your teammates, your sisters and creating that own, the, your own energy um, in warm ups, you know, in our pregame talks. 
Um, when we go in the locker room, it's a lot of yelling, cheering, and I think that just creates, you know, all of that energy. And um, that's the fun part. You know, we do it for ourselves. It's not always for – well, obviously, it's always for our fans. But when, you know, we're in a situation where there's other fans, we do it for us. It's We're going to be the same team, have the same energy, and um, just embrace the challenge. Cool. Thank you. Sweet. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.